As a competitive runner and a coach, I'm always striving to find the perfect balance between recovery and adoption. If you're watching this video, you too have probably come across your fair share of injuries or tough workouts that made walking down the stairs a viral TikTok video. And like many runners before you, when faced with a slight twinge or delayed muscle soreness from training, you may have popped anti-inflammatories such as ibuprofen and Advil. But what if I told you that recent research has shown that anti-inflammatory drugs can potentially be deadly when racing and actually limit or cancel out the very training benefits we're desperate to achieve? That notion flies in the face of everything you thought about the benefits of anti-inflammatory drugs, right? So in this video, we're going to, one, dive deep into the science of inflammation, two, how and why using anti-inflammatories may be hampering your results, three, the research on potential health risks of using them during racing, and four, how you can take steps to maximize your training and recovery without them. So let's dive into the research. Did you know that according to a study published in 2014, some 30 to 80% of runners use NSAIDs during training and races? That's a big number. And the sad part is I, along with many other athletes, thought we were being tough and helping our training by reducing inflammation with ibuprofen and Advil. But the reality is that research has shown that anti-inflammatory drugs can potentially be deadly when racing and actually limit or cancel out the very training benefits we're so desperate to achieve. So why do we still use anti-inflammatories so readily? Well, it likely starts because the term inflammation gets a bad rap. Most people just automatically assume inflammation is a bad thing or something we want to prevent. However, inflammation isn't necessarily a bad thing. Inflammation is a protective attempt by your body to remove harmful stimuli and to initiate the healing process. Without getting too scientific, after a hard workout or during the early stages of an injury, the body activates specific cells that attack the injured area by increasing blood flow, producing swelling, and stimulating the nerves that cause pain. In short, inflammation is actually the beginning of the healing process and is critical to healing injuries and recovering from normal bouts of training. While inflammation is the culprit behind pain and swelling, without it, much of the recovery process would be slower. Anti-inflammatory drugs inhibit training adaption. Since we know that inflammation is actually an important step in the healing process, we can begin to appreciate how taking anti-inflammatory medications after hard workouts may inhibit training adaption. When you run, you actually create small micro tears in the muscles with every step you take. The faster or the harder you run, the more forcefully you contract the muscles and the more damage you incur. These micro tears stimulate an inflammatory response signaling the body to deliver resources such as blood, oxygen, and nutrients to begin the healing process. By taking anti-inflammatory drugs, you prevent the inflammation process from initiating the healing process. Recently, numerous studies have confirmed this new theory on the harmful effects of anti-inflammatory drugs. One study took a look at ibuprofen administration during endurance training and specifically examined the effects of ibuprofen on the skeletal muscle. Amazingly, the results showed that taking ibuprofen during endurance training canceled running specific adaptions in skeletal muscle. To back up the study, a 2009 study confirmed in the lab that the use of NSAIDs after long races and training bouts slowed the healing of muscle tissues, ligaments, and bones. The research is clear, taking anti-inflammatory drugs such as Advil and ibuprofen after a workout will result in slower recovery time. Anti-inflammatory drugs to prevent pain. Another common reason runners use ibuprofen or Advil is to take the edge off the pain of racing or to help a previous injury from bothering them during a race. If you thought you were the only one who has made this mistake, think again. In a 2008 study of Ironman competitors, it showed that 50% of racers used NSAIDs immediately prior to or during the race. Unfortunately, the idea that NSAIDs will help take the edge off the pain of racing or prevent an injury from getting worse doesn't hold up to science. Studies conducted on runners at the Western States 100 miler found that there was no perceived or actual difference between the runners using ibuprofen during the race and those who weren't. Finally, the use of NSAIDs to mask pain from an injury may allow you to continue training in the short term, but will ultimately lead to a more serious and longer lasting injury down the road. I don't think science is needed to confirm that running while injured isn't a good idea. Unfortunately, it's all too easy to mask the natural pain receptors of the brain to trick ourselves into thinking we can still train. 
using NSAIDs during a race may lead to kidney problems. Though their anti-inflammatory effects, research has shown that anti-inflammatories blunt prostaglandin production in the kidneys, in turn causing vasoconstriction and decreased blood flow. This increases kidney strain considerably. Couple this with the fact that during racing, the renal system is already under strain from endurance exercise. And not just the kidneys, the cardio-renal axis refers to the bi-directional relationship between the heart and the kidneys. Dysfunction in one organ can lead to dysfunction in the other due to their shared regulatory pathways. So kidney injury increases the risk of cardiopulmonary complications as well. Anti-inflammatory use during racing considerably increases the risk of acute and maybe chronic renal and cardiopulmonary injury. So when is it good to take anti-inflammatory drugs? The question then becomes, when is it appropriate for a runner to take ibuprofen and Advil? Like most real life situations, too much of any one thing isn't good. During the initial stage of an acute injury, such as a muscle strain, sudden bout of tendonitis, or an ankle sprain, NSAIDs can actually facilitate healing. The exact reason for the difference in healing properties between normal inflammation and excess inflammation are not clearly understood by scientists. However, research does show that during the first two to three days of an acute injury, NSAIDs can help heal injuries. So what does this mean? If you have a sudden acute running injury, taking ibuprofen or Advil in the first two to three days is advised. Again, acute injuries are things like a rolled ankle, a muscle tear, or something that occurs quickly. After that two to three day window, you're, you should let your body's own natural healing mechanisms take over. Now that you've seen the research, I hope that the next time you're about to pop the cap on a bottle of Advil before a race, after a tough workout, or to help heal a nagging IT band injury, you sink again. Not only is there no benefit to NSAIDs in those situations, but it could actually be hindering your health, recovery, and performance. Let us know in the comments what you think. Have you ever abused anti-inflammatories in training before? Let us know.